Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Transnet this week outlined the approach it is taking to address serious allegations of corruption relating to its procurement of new locomotives. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the response and its possible implications. Hi, Terence. Hi, oh, Following the Gupta leak emails, allegations have surfaced indicating that contracts awarded to China Southrail have benefited a business with Gupta family ties. That's right. You know, a lot has come up and South Africa's had to digest a lot of information over the last few months around this whole issue of state capture and whether certain programs, especially at the state-owned companies like Transnet and Eskom, have been repurposed to suit the interests of a certain family. And the uh, one report that came out came out of uh, Scorpio and Amabongani relating to the contracts with uh, China South Rail that um, Transnet placed this really large contract back in 2014 and China South Rail was the biggest, one of the biggest beneficiaries of a contract that was split four ways and is supplying 359 electric locomotives under the contract to Transnet. This is over and above two other contracts that preceded that um, and so it's, it's a fairly a large part of the new fleet that's entering the transport system. And uh, the, the issues that have come to the fore and have now been taken to another level because the economic freedom fighters have now laid charges at the police station against Transnet, certain executives, um, including the finance minister, Manusi Gigaba, where the, alleg uh, the allegation is really that uh, the Gupta linked family, well, through Salim Essa, there's a Hong Kong-based entity, not only led to an overcharge for these locomotives, but is benefiting to the, quite handsomely to the tune of, I think about 10 million rand is the allegation for every 50 million rands worth of locomotive that is sold to Transnet and it's being channeled through this company. So it's a serious allegation <coughs> and there's also a whole lot of intrigue around the board appointments and who sat on certain uh, adjudication committees and whether tender processes were breached during that process. So Transnet um, has taken uh, a note of these reports and has actually instituted an investigation. Um, it's being led by worksmen's attorneys and they say they've been given a sort of a period of three months to get to the bottom of this and to understand whether there is this Hong Kong third party, um, whether there was an overcharge, whether there was a value for money sort of uh, approach on, a, on the whole tender. Um, maybe I think the focus will be obviously China South Rail but probably on the other components because we know that Obviously, General Electric is supplying diesel um, locomotives. We've got uh, China North Rail, which is subsequently merged with China South Rail, but that's beside the point, is supplying um, electric uh, diesel locomotives as well. And we've got um, Bombardier Transportation supplying um, also uh, electric lo locomotives. So it's, it's a very big contract, 1,064 locomotives, 50 billion rand plus. And uh, I think that there's a feeling that we really need to get to the bottom of whether this was breached in any way. So over the next few months, there will be this intense uh, uh, audit, into, uh, forensic uh, in investigation. And we should hopefully know from a transnet perspective whether they're going to need to be pursuing any legal action of their own um, and how the criminal charges that are now laid with the police might also fold in par unfold in parallel. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot to watch over the next few months. There's also a persistent suggestion that the local content commitments relating to the locomotive contracts aren't being met. Yes, this is coming up all the time. And um, there was a report commissioned by TIPS, it's a, a research house, and does a lot of work with the Department of Trade and Industry, which basically said they can't see any evidence that any of the Chinese locomotives have been made uh, in South Africa. So as part of the, um, the 1064 contract, now there were, as I mentioned earlier, there were other contracts that have had other local or localization aspects to it, but not as explicit as the ones in the 2024, which came um, after a treasury note on um, rolling stock being designated by DTR for local content, which means that 60% of a diesel locomotive and 55% of an electric locomotive needs to be uh, locally um, procured. So the, the, those components within the locomotive. And there's a feeling that this is not being met by all the OEMs. We have seen over the last few months some factories opening up and we know that GE 
over the years has set up quite a big footprint in Kudusport. And we are told that the Chinese manufacturer in the form of China South Rail is also setting up in Kudusport with the electric lo locomotives. And that Bombardier and China North Rail are setting up very much in Durban as the, the base for their uh, electric and diesel locomotives. So there are things happening, but the, it's not clear that the, co the local content targets are being met. One of the big problems is that DTR has designated the SABS to do the verification, and it seems that maybe there's been some slowness in getting that capacity up and running and doing the audits, and maybe once the audits are done, everything will come up ro roses. But at the moment, there's a lot of suspicion that things are being allowed to slip. At the, uh, what Transnet is saying is that it is happening, that they are doing their own internal audits separately using PricewaterhouseCoopers, and that they can say that you know what there might be a misunderstanding of how these contracts are structured, because all of them, except for Bombardier, all of them had some locomotives being uh, produced outside of the country. So, um, with uh, in the case of China South Rail, 40 of the locomotives were going to be produced in China, and the balance of the 360 plus were going to be produced locally. So they they might be in this uh, trying to account for that gap that might be where uh, these anomalies are arising. But we do need a greater visibility on this, and basically we do need DTR and SABS to step up and do this audit so that we have a firm understanding of whether the local content commitments are being met and uh, are being verified. And if they're not being met, then penalties must be issued, uh, those notice of penalties must be issued and the OEMs must pay. How are these issues affecting the immediate performance of Translate? Well, interestingly, Transnet's performance in the last year has been quite strong. So we see operationally and financially a good recovery. This is in a very weak economic climate, so we've seen uh, really Transnet taking market share, uh, given that this, the, the economy overall is in recession, and the transport economy is no exception, in fact, is also in recession. So they're doing fairly well in, in claiming market share. I'm sure these new locomotives and the new wagons are helping them be more competitive in getting some of the, capturing some of that um, much wanted rail friendly traffic back to rail that's been that had migrated to road over the last 20 years or so or more and more so there seems to be some progress on that front financially as well there seems to be um, a, a better performance both higher revenues but also profitabilities return quite strongly so the immediate impact on the business of all this governance concern and the potential that there was for tender rigging um, isn't immediately evident in the performance of the company and, it's, and we hope that that uh, can be sustained. But there's no doubt that governance at state-owned companies is a big issue and there is a big concern that this is really where the, the centre of state capture is at the moment, that at the companies like Transnet and Eskom, these, their programmes, their procurements have been repurposed for the interests of a very small elite. So I think there's a, a real nece necessity to get on top of, one, the allegations, um, lay the charges if there need to be charges, prosecute people, jail people if necessary, and then um, obviously we need to have much better um, uh, governance in place, both through the new shareholder structures that are going to come out of government in the next few months. We hope to see visibility of those at some point this year around how we're going to have um, state-owned companies managed uh, from a government perspective. And then obviously it's all about the people and appointing really good people to the boards and then allowing those boards to appoint really good executives. So the immediate impact is hard to see, but the long-term trend around state capture is a big worry and one that we have to really nip in the bud once and for all. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.